Hello everyone, my name is Shelly Calhoun-Jones and I'm a Principal Technologist here at Cohesity. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Cohesity Data Protect delivered as a service to protect an S3 bucket. But why is this important? Let's imagine that we work for a company that has recently gone through an acquisition. They have data on-prem and a few AWS accounts within the organization. We can use Cohesity to back up our on-prem or AWS resources. For instance, you may have a workload running on AWS, such as a multi-tier application that could be using Amazon S3 for hosting the website, file storage, or even content distribution. In this video, we'll take a look at how we can use Cohesity Data Protect delivered as a service to protect and recover an S3 bucket. To access Data Protect, I can click on Protection and then select Data Protect as a Service. In the Sources section, you can set up protection for virtual and physical workloads, databases, and applications. The section includes protection for different sources, including AWS accounts. Up at the top, you have the ability to filter by type or by region. If I want to register a new source, I can click on Register Source up at the top, and you'll notice that Cohesity supports various sources, including physical servers. So if your company is still migrating to the cloud, you can choose either physical servers or virtual machines. Now I can also edit an existing source. For example, I may still be testing Data Protect with AWS and may want to add additional services like S3 to my configuration. This screen gives information about the destination cloud region, um, services to backup, and you'll also notice that you can use it as a DR target for a service called Cohesity Site Continuity. So if for any reason your company experiences an outage, you can fail over to the cloud for continued business operations. So you can see in this example, we already do have our AWS services enabled, but if you are testing this out, you have the ability to uncheck or recheck any of these options. And so by clicking on my AWS account source, you can see that I have options for Amazon EC2, RDS, and now S3. Now the tabs will show you uh, both protected and unprotected resources. And you'll also notice up here at the top that we have the ability uh, to change the view. And you'll notice that right now we're in the list view, but I also have the ability to uh, sort by regional hierarchy, or I can also uh, sort by tagging. Now, if you choose to tag your resources, you'll notice that uh, this gives you the ability to sort based off of the type of resources that you have within your environment. So um, in a production environment, you may choose to tag your resources that belong to a specific cost center, maybe belong to a dev staging environment, um, or even uh, mission critical. Maybe you have mission critical resources uh, within your environment and you want to tag them um, based off of a specific project. So it gives you a lot of different options and it does also help uh, from a security automation perspective, having the ability to readily delineate um, the type of resources that you're managing. But in this example, we're going to go ahead and leave it set to this hierarchical view um, so we can actually view our resources uh, based off of region. And so if I want to uh, protect a new resource, I can just select the corresponding entry here and then just choose protect. So in Cohesity Data Protect, a policy is a reusable collection of settings that define the how and the when in which objects from a source are protected. 
Now you can create as many policies as you need for your use cases. And in this example, you can see that we're looking at this gold policy, which gives us some pre-configured uh, backup and data retention settings. But I could also go in and add additional options for perhaps running um, periodic full backups or maybe even specifying a quiet time or a blackout window during the day. So once I've confirmed my settings, I'll click on Protect. The activity page provides a list of recent backups using a timeline format. I can filter by region. I can filter by the type of task whether we met the SLA and whether the task itself was successful. If I click on source type, I can also choose underneath AWS, Amazon S3, and we can see recent backup jobs that have occurred. I haven't recovered a resource just yet, but we'll do so here in just a moment. Let's actually click on one of these entries first. In this example, we can see the backup task succeeded. Uh, the SLA was met. It'll also give us the overall duration and the amount of data that was backed up. The backup task activity shows us an entire timeline of the backup task being added to the queue, retrieving items for the backup process, and then completing the backup job. But what if we need to recover a file? Let's take a look at the recovery process of an S3 bucket within Cohesity Data Protect delivered as a service. In fact, let's look at a different S3 bucket. In this example, we're looking at a logs bucket used by a multi-tier application hosted on a pool of Amazon EC2 instances. And in the recovery window, uh, we can see more information about the bucket that we want to restore. And you'll also notice that we have the ability to recover to a new location, which I'm going to choose for testing purposes. So I'll choose our AWS account. And you, you can see that we're going to uh, defer to North Virginia, uh, which is where our primary location is in this example. Let's go ahead and choose this AWS Cohesity S3 backup. We're going to restore to this separate uh, S3 bucket that we're using for testing purposes. And then I can also give this task a um, specific name. So in this example, we can say recover S3 and I'll just put in my initials. This completes the demonstration. In this video, we took a look at how we can use Cohesity Data Protect delivered as a service to protect and recover an S3 bucket. Thanks for watching. Thank you.